All right, good to see you again uh, in this rainy day. I hope you have survived this long rain. Well, we uh, learned about privatization of state-owned enterprise, right? So privatization is one good way of raising the productivity of a state-owned enterprise. But, you know, not all SOEs can be privatized. We need SOE, right? But what is your evaluation on your SOE's performance? Are they efficient enough? Probably not, right? Probably not. And what about their performance? If they have to spend a lot of money because of the, uh, the lack of uh, bankruptcy possibility, well, it's understood. It's a, we can understand that because it is a state-owned enterprise, right? But what about their performance? Are they making a good performance as well, although they are spending a lot? Yes? Um, in my country, if, uh, if you compare it to the private sector, like private competitors of the SOEs and SOBs also, mm -hmm. Silicon Valley, the dollar enterprises, the, the private sector is, uh, efficiency is much more higher than the okay. uh, state-owned one, because the, uh, I think the motive the end motive for the private one is the making profits, mm -hmm. but the state-owned one is the, as it's like uh, at the end of the day subsidized by the government. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Right. No motive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, private company has to make a profit, so they have to cut down the cost, right? But state-owned enterprise doesn't have to worry about the cost because it will be financed by the government. In other words, they can spend more to raise the quality of the service. But what do you think? Quality is really high in state-owned enterprise? Generally, it is not the case. So they spend a lot, but the quality of service is not so impressive. Okay? And also, they are making a lot of corruption cases as well. Uh, what will be the source of those problems? What do you think? Why state-owned enterprises neither efficient nor productive in their performance, and even they are making corruption cases. What would be the root cause of these phenomena? Well, I think in Georgia's case, it's because of the law that we have. There's a gap in the law. Mm -hmm. The management that they have, they don't have any not not many obligation to be transparent. To mm -hmm. So they have their reports, they call their meetings, and those are the that they are not public, and we don't know what's going on in their company. Right, so right. Transparency issue is one of the problems. Okay, no transparency, no pressure. Okay, we don't evaluate Samsung Electronics. Government does not evaluate the Samsung Electronics, but we are very confident about their efficiency. Okay, uh, why Samsung Electronics? can be efficient as much as possible, whereas state-owned ent and enterprises are not so efficient. What is something that Samsung has which state-owned enterprise doesn't have? What is it? Uh, I think uh, Samsung Electronics has so many computers, mm -hmm. and but for the state-owned enterprise, there is no direct leader. Right, exactly. Samsung Electronics has competition. Okay, In this open global world, they have to compete with Apple's, you know, Xiaomi, they have to compete with many other you know, producers in the world. But state-owned enterprise don't have to do that. Therefore, somebody has to watch their performance. Without it, they will be just be relaxed and you know, will be happy as they are without making much you know, progress in their performance, right? So, how to Manage state-owned enterprise is today's topic. There, we need SOEs anyway, because we cannot privatize all SOE. We have to have state-owned enterprise, but how can we manage this so that SOEs can perform better? Let me talk about the sources of the problems of state-owned enterprise. There are four uh, stakeholders, and each stakeholder has a collusion with state-owned enterprise. Collusion between SOE and politicians. You know, what, do you, what is collusion? Collusion is there are two parties, and they agree on something, sacrificing someone else 
who is not participating in this agreement. These two or three sometimes agree on something, but that agreement gives some sacrifice to someone else who is not in this agreement. That's a collusion. How can we tackle these four collusion? But what is most serious collusion in your country? Please tell me about your situation. What do you think is most serious collusion in your country? Yes? Um, in the Philippines, I think the most serious problem is the first one. First one. Um, politician. Mm -hmm. It starts with the appointing of the head of the SOEs usually. Mm -hmm. Like um, those who are appointed are like friends or closely related with the president or the higher um, officials. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like a, it's a give and take. So right. they get the position and, you know, the right. corrupted. They cannot say no because the one who influenced your appointment is asking your help and you know there is no way of saying no, right? The governance system, the first centralized system versus decentralized. This centralized uh, means centralized within the central government. Decentralized system means decentralized within the central government. So my question, who are the manager of SOE? Who are managing your SOE? Is it line ministry or is it some other ministry such as Ministry of Finance? Which is the case? This is a centralized system. In this case, Ministry of Finance or Ministry of Planning or Ministry of Economy or Prime Minister's Office, you know, they are the one who manage SOE. So SOEs are managed by some neutral third party. That's a centralized system. Okay? This decentralized system means that SOE is controlled by their mother ministry. Electricity company by Ministry of Energy. Railway company is managed by Ministry of Transportation. You know, that's a option two, decentralized system. Professor, for us, I, um, I cannot determine which one uh, applies to our country, to Philippines right now, because we have like a separate ministry that governs all the SODs. We call that, uh, actually we called it the government-owned controlled corporations. And they're the one in charge or who handles all the SOEs in our country. But it is not, uh, it is decentralized, but it is not governed by a certain mini ministry according to their function. Okay. So I don't know which one. Okay, so the, uh, the point is, the, uh, the one who governs SOE has business relation with the state-owned SOEs or not. That's a critical issue. If they have a business relation, like a relation between railway system and transportation ministry, then it is decentralized system. And if they don't have any business relations, only management relations, such as budget or personnel management, then it is a centralized system. Okay? Good question, good question. My research question was what are the impact of central government? My preferred option is not a good solution for your country. That's absolutely fine. But you have to add a little bit more reason. All right. All right, the next one, please. Well, I choose this class because um, looking at the, the class syllabus, um, it talks about um, the different problems and issues in public governance or public service, uh, such as organizational problems, leadership, and policy problems. And as someone working for um, the Ministry of Health and as a public servant, I think these are very important knowledge for me to identify and learn about these challenges and how um, I can help address these challenges. I'm working with NGOs and I'm practically practitioner in uh, social development and in some issues which are related to development in my country. I've learned uh, how you can just uh, criticize the public sector's functions and you can also come up with your own uh, new agendas that is required for the new upcoming change and which can create a lot of uh, you know, changes in the social development. 
and it, it, it itself give the citizens to imbibe a lot in the sector so with the help of the management of the public factors yes uh, prior to KDI school I worked in the Ministry of Finance back in my country during the class we learned the, how to privatize the state-owned enterprises like scenarios how to and the tools for that and then how to evaluate the government institutes and then how to increase their efficiency and that's it one of the reasons why this course is engaging and interactive is the uh, professors uh, more than 20 years of experience uh, as a uh, division head in the administrative reforms and the, this, I mean, a professor's experience makes the class more interesting. Well, excellent. So you have done a great job today. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>